It should be all right, right? Yeah, so uh, I'm Dr. Nita Hussain, and uh, I was supposed to co-present the session with Professor Aravindan. He was the head of the Department of Pathology in the same institute, but unfortunately, he's not here. So uh, I'm, I'm presenting for the both of us. Uh, so uh, this presentation is going to be about uh, the project which I'm doing for the past five months in my institute. Have you ever imagined what happens when you send a sample to a laboratory? Say, so most of us might have fallen ill at some point of our lives and we might have had to run some blood tests or maybe have to do a biopsy or maybe send a aspirate for cytopathology. So have you ever imagined what happens to all these specimens? So uh, I have put up a flowchart with shows the process in a very simple way. Uh, your doctor first collects the specimen from your body, then they send it to the laboratory where they process it using, you know, then they embed it, they color it, and they put it under the microscope, they look through the microscope, uh, one of the doctors or, a, or an expert technician looks through the microscope and then they arrive at the diagnosis. And how do they look under the microscope? They look like this, this, and this. So let's try to figure out what this is. Uh, on, uh, on the right side, uh, you are seeing the cross section uh, of an artery, a blood vessel that carries blood to the heart. And uh, on the left side, you are seeing uh, the same blood vessel, but uh, the in inside of it is obscured, it has material in it, and therefore the blood is not flowing into it. And if the blood is not flowing into the heart, you get a heart attack, which is called the myocardial infarction. And uh, this picture shows, the, this is a picture of the myocardial infarction. So uh, your doctor sends the specimen and, and, and the pathologist looks through the microscope and figures out that you had a, uh, the patient had a myocardial infarction. And um, say a patient comes with uh, a swelling on the breast, and uh, your doctor will not be able to say if it's a cancer or not a cancer until they look through the microscope. So uh, again, what the doctor does is they send a sample to the laboratory, and in the laboratory they process it, color it, fix it, and they look through the microscope, and if it looks like the image on your left, it's, it's, it's called the Phylloid's tumor, and it's a relatively benign form of uh, disease, and which means that you do not have cancer. And if it looks like the picture on your right, um, it's, it's the lobular carcinoma and it's, it's a malignant variety. So whether it's cancer or not cancer is not told by your surgeon or your physician, but the ultimate or, and the life-saving decision lies with the pathologist. So this is how important pathology images are. And I'm sure looking into looking deeply into all these images will make anybody a philosopher because they are like uh, very beautiful and you know artistic and abstract yeah uh, so uh, the project page on english wikipedia has the shortcut wikipedia medglum you can go through it and uh, see all those images um, so what is pathology at the first place pathology is the study of diseases um, and um, we have like basic medical sciences like anatomy of your body and the physiology of the body and clinical sciences were you know uh, you have your doctor looking into your symptoms examining you and figuring out what diseases you have and pathology acts as a bridge between this basic sciences and these clinical sciences so basically your doctor um, uh, examines you and uh, says the specimens to your laboratory and the pathology uh, expert or the, the MD there uh, sits there and looks into the microscope and uh, performs the relevant investigations and reports back to your clinician saying that this might be the disease you know uh, your patient is having. So uh, this is uh, the Department of Pathology in uh, my institute. Um, so we, uh, the department runs undergraduate and postgraduate and paramedical courses and we have a lot of material uh, including like 20,000 histopathology specimens and like 10,000 cytology specimens and we have like a 200,000 blood specimens coming every year uh, and all these images and the kind of images I upload are entirely from the department's collection and the kind of images we do not upload are those which reveal the identity of the patient because it's very important to preserve anonymity and again um, 
even the department doesn't know which slide comes from what patient, but but then they do have like numbers which will you know help us to track the patient. So uh, we do not uh, upload images that reveals the identity. And again, uh, the department is also a part of several other projects, and they have already published images for different research work and all those already published images do not come under uh, this project and all the rest of the images qualify to be in this project and we choose the best among them to be uploaded to wikimedia uh, so it was in the year 2011 when i was a student in the same department that i took a very amateur amateur picture uh, uh, of the slide of the ovary and i uploaded it to wikimedia commons later uh, three years later in uh, 2013 uh, when I was just going through uh, a medical news website, I was surprised to see that the same image got featured there. And it was then that I thought, why not just have a glam project um, uh, with my institute, you know, uploading all those images in a very professional way. And uh, so I discussed with uh, the head of the department and he was very cooperative and that was how the entire project came into being. But then GLAM stood for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And so uh, I included L for laboratories because, you know, it was in a way like we were redefining GLAM by including a laboratory, by bringing a laboratory into the picture. That was unheard of, you know, at that time. Uh, so um, it was like, you know, uh, we had a very different GLAM project uh, with a laboratory getting images from them. So uh, why did the department choose to give all these free images? Because the classical ways of teaching medicine are like very description oriented, very patient oriented, but pathology, as you know from the previous images, is a very visually oriented subject. You cannot learn it without looking into the images. So I'll illustrate that with an example. So um, uh, there is a condition called the endometrial hyperplasia. And when you look through the microscope, it is nicknamed as the Swiss cheese appearance. So what you see through the microscope looks like the Swiss cheese. And uh, the Robbins textbook of pathology, a standard textbook, says that the Swiss cheese appearance is like multiple sharply demarcated, variable sized, and randomly scattered, rounded spaces superimposed on a relatively homogeneous or solid background. And if this is the image that is coming to your mind. You're very wrong. It looks like this. So until you see the picture, you can never make out what it is. So um, you have to see the picture in order to be able to figure out you know, what exactly it is. And again, uh, collections of good quality images in pathology as of now are very rare and expensive. And I'll tell you why. So these are all the processes which your slide has to go through uh, this is the processing. This is uh, the way uh, you process a slide when uh, they are collected and sent to the laboratory. It takes a few weeks of time in my laboratory. I think it's the same everywhere across the globe. And depending upon which part of the uh, world you're coming from, it could take anywhere between $10 and $100. US And you need uh, sophisticated e equipment. You need l expert lab technicians. You need a doctor to look into the slides and give the diagnosis. So these are all the steps which a slide has to go through. And therefore, it's very expensive to create all these slides to maintain the laboratories. And that's why all these slides are very expensive. Uh, and in my institute, it's a government-funded institute. and all these process happen, processes happen for free, and therefore I'm able to upload all these images to Wikimedia Commons at no cost. And uh, this is the department. Uh, th these are pictures from my department where the staff members are processing the images and looking into them and uh, writing the diagnosis. Again, uh, proper annotations are missing in most free images you find on the internet. Uh, so um, uh, there are like so many amateur images, so many researches uh, being put up on the internet, but then uh, most of them do not have proper annotations. Uh, but when we are uploading it from uh, the Department of Pathology in my institute, uh, they are being done by residents and the staff members. So uh, all of them are like very authentic. So our aim was to make available free, authentic, or annotated images for teach for the public and also for teaching medical students. So this is the gallery I've put up, uh, especially for use of medical students from India who are pursuing their undergraduate studies. So all these images uh, are in the order as specified by their medical curriculum. And if people could just, uh, if they could just have the link, they could go through all the pictures with their descriptions. 
Um, and we also aim to create a repository of free images for use for research and textbooks. And uh, it's only five months since, but I've still, I've got like a couple of requests from a few people writing atlases, asking me if it's possible for them to use my image, uh, use all these images uh, into their atlases, which I think is very remarkable. Um, and we also fa uh, aim to facilitate easy image search, uh, both on Google, uh, both on search engines and also on Wikimedia Commons by putting like very appropriate categories, keywords, and tags. Um, and also, we, uh, so yeah, this is um, uh, the gallery, uh, which uh, we have, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, this is a screenshot uh, from uh, the category, uh, images from the Department of Pathology, Calicut Medical College, uh, which is where you will see all the images from the department. Um, then we also uh, aim to initiate discussions about rare case scenarios because uh, Wikimedia Commons will open up a possibility of you know having uh, medical professionals from all over the world discuss about a particular image. Say for example, you get uh, a slide and you do not know what it is. You can upload them to Commons and write the description the way you know, and then send it to you know uh, another pathologist sitting in the UK or the US or Africa or wherever, and ask their opinion as well. And you know we can have collaborations. Uh, we uh, on the project page we also have the facility of you requesting an image and say if you want a picture of uh, bronchial carcinoma. Um, you can just ask it on the uh, project page on English Wikipedia, and we'll uh, look up our lesion register. Uh, we'll pull up the image uh, of the ca can. Uh, we, we'll pull up the image you want, and uh, we'll take you know uh, good uh, photographs, good s shots, and then we upload them to comments and give you the link. So if you are writing articles related to pathology and you want any particular image, uh, we are here to help. Yes. Uh, so, w what are we planning to aim next? Uh, so, um, I have this very fancy dream of uh, having the institute uh, review pathology articles. So, probably we can have like, you know, um, a glam partnership where um, we have uh, an institute look adopting certain articles, uh, seeing, uh, looking through all these references, and maybe put up a template on the talk page saying that this article has been reviewed by this institute and such, uh, such and such date, and this revision is like really authentic according to our concept. So maybe we can have uh, some partnership like that. Um, and as of now, uh, pathology, pathology is a paraclinical subject, so we also plan to have partnership with clinical departments, which are like, which also have like very visually oriented uh, stuff, like the Department of Dermatology and the Department of Ophthalmology. Uh, then we also uh, hope to categorize it according to the undergraduate and postgraduate curriculum in many countries. Uh, they are like very similar. I mean, uh, throughout the world, if you are studying um, medicine, um, you might be referring the Robbins textbook of pathology, and the syllabus is like more or less the same. So we hope to categorize it uh, for students, and maybe we can have the students themselves do it uh, as a part of the Wikipedia education program. Um, and then, uh, lang um, Knowledge should not be limited to uh, any language, so maybe it would be a good idea to have uh, it linked to Wikidata with translations to other languages, so that you know, all the images have a description in, you know, you can uh, look for the image in any language and uh, still uh, get your output. Uh, and finally, ultimately, I hope to see uh, all these images aiding machine vision and image processing because uh, the future of pathology is really bright and it's really easy to teach the computer to recognize uh, uh, the cells and uh, uh, the particular cues given in each image. Uh, it's really very uh, exhaustive for the pathologist to be able to look for a sickle cell, a small sickle cell, uh, or a small schizond or things like that. So if you can teach the computer to recognize all these things, it's going to be very easy. Um, it's it's going to make the whole process automatic or semi-automatic. So we hope to be able to uh, have our images aid to uh, machine vision and image processing. Okay, thank you. And this is the entire department. Of course, I'm missing from the picture. And if um, you uh, want to write to me, yeah, that's my email ID. And um, uh, if you want to write to my professor, who is also helping me with the project, that's his email ID as well. Yes, thank you.